people. The, the plants look amazing, right? I mean, you look at the leaves, each new leaf comes out different. So you, you don't know what you're going to expect when, when the leaf comes out. So that, that what, that's what makes the hobby really interesting. Running the greenhouse has given productivity a boost and it's been a boon for the business. Ever since we shifted most of our plants to the greenhouse here, I would say the env environment is more conducive in terms of the humidity level, uh, the natural sunlight that we're getting. Um, yeah, I mean the growth rate exponentially increases and became a lot faster compared to what we are keeping at home. Nothing beats the natural sunlight. Lah. With better use of equipment and technology, their collection has grown and includes more valuable exotic plants that they source from regions as far away as the Amazon. Some unique varieties could fetch more than 10,000 Singapore dollars a pot. When we talk about the value of the plants, because during this COVID period, a lot of people, they cannot travel, they cannot do things that of the norm. So this plant hobby actually goes all the way up. And the supply of the plants around Singapore is also not a lot. When the supply is low, the demand is high. Naturally, the prices will shoot up. So we are talking about some plants that five years ago, 10 years ago, that cost only $20. And nobody really want that plant so much. So for that same particular plant this day, today, during the COVID period, $20 plant can easily go up to one, two thousand or few thousand dollar plant. For the four friends, turning their passion into an enterprise has helped them recoup some of their investments. It also helps pay bills such as rent, fertilizers and other related costs to run the greenhouse. With dark clouds looming on the horizon for Singapore's economy amid the recent wave of COVID-19 infections, it's contributions from small businesses such as these that could help the city-state in its recovery. And to add to that hobby scene, when Singapore was back in the thick of its circuit breaker period last year, many social media images emerged of people crafting at home. But even before this pandemic, the maker scene in Singapore was already growing. CNA's program On the Red Dot uh, throws the spotlight on some of these young Singaporeans giving up their corporate jobs to make crafts. I feel like we share the same struggle of uh, turning our passion into business. No, actual money. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's very interesting to see all these uh, Singaporeans um, uh, working really hard. Some even traveled overseas. Like Ahmad, he, he went to like Indonesia uh, to learn what working, what crafting. And it's interesting to see, um, I can relate to it because it's same with YouTube. Uh, everybody wants to become a YouTube creator uh, for various of reasons, but um, those who are able to succeed, um, they're not driven by money. They're driven by passion mm -hmm. because it takes a lot of time to get that viewership and subscribers. And uh, that was the same with all these crafters I met. And mm -hmm. they're really passionate about their work. And yeah. All right, Ahmed, uh, let's bring you into the conversation. We understand you've had a good run working in the entertainment industry as a tech crew before turning to woodworking. And uh, what's unique about your work is that a lot of it is made of sustainable materials. Now, how has the change of career been for you? And tell us more about your work. Uh, change of career wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be any much difference because uh, the day that I found uh, the biggest pile of wood was actually outside of Victoria Theatre while I was working at uh, under Esplanade. Uh, it was actually uh, a lumbus uh, reclaimed by uh, the project at the old Parliament House. And it was the beginning and I documented every single trip the, uh, from the first day of uh, when I first started uh, woodworking as a passion. And uh, all the way it was has been thrilling, uh, it was it's been fun, uh, crazy I would say, uh, the struggle was unexpectedly real. I uh, didn't expect it to be uh, really, really tough. And I'm glad that I have uh, prevailed and, you know, succeed in all this, uh, all this journey, right? With not just my, by myself, with a whole new people, uh, with my team, uh, strangers that I meet, uh, the people that wanted to learn, and, uh, and for my partner and my fa support for my family. Uh, they have been awesome. Uh, without Without a doubt, they trust me 100% that, you know, the, 
the thing that I wanted to do in as a woodworker, as a furniture maker, was really backed up by them. You know, they were uh, like my backbone uh, that supports me to go through all this trouble. It really takes a village. Uh, Gib, besides woodworking, what other sorts of crafts did you come across? What surprised you the most? Uh, I also learned pasta making, leather working, and also crochet. And I think crochet surprised me the most because um, I didn't know it was so difficult to make all those stitches. And there's so many patterns and it's something my uh, grandma used to do. Uh, grandma and grandpa in Japan used to do as uh, their career. And I feel like I appreciate more of her work because I went through all the struggles and difficulties of making a crochet piece. And uh, just just last thing, right, um, thank you so it's, it was very interesting to see the, uh, oops, sorry, the despair and dedication of the craft people in Singapore. And as a foreigner, I, I didn't really see uh, made in Singapore things, right? But uh, I'm very confident that uh, made in Singapore things will uh, perhaps become a thing in Singapore and throughout the other world after hosting this four series, four episodes. Yeah, fascinating stuff. And Alphamed, before we let you go, in an age where everything is sort of mass produced, how challenging has it been to bring back that appeal of handmade furniture? And would you say there's been a sort of growing interest in made in Singapore furniture? Definitely, there's a lot of uh, great interest. Uh, it has been around uh, for a very long time. It's just that uh, it takes some time to get the awareness that imperfection is, is actually a good thing, right? Give an example for uh, if you were to use a reclaimed wood. Uh, it will actually help you uh, promote uh, the environment. Uh, it will actually give you more character to your product. It gives you a story tale to tell your friends and family uh, who comes to your house, you know, and, uh, you know, and the pride uh, of having a, a patriotic pride to see that a Singaporean actually made this. And uh, it has been a pleasure to actually serve all my customers. Uh, and uh, it will always have a story that lasts you and you can pass it down as a heirloom to your uh, children and grandchildren. Well, from pride and passion to pests, cicadas are making a comeback. Yes, they've arrived by the billions throughout the U.S. Uh, East Coast, and some are even making their Olympic debut. Look, he is lifting weights. That's how I got my shot where he was doing it with just one little feeble arm, and it looks like he's really lifting the whole thing. In that bow and that's the voice of self-proclaimed crazy cicadas lady and professional photographer Oksana Ware. She's holding creative photo shoots for these insects. Uh, besides a few Olympians just hanging out in her backyard, Ware has superstar cicadas rocking out in a band and some college graduates as well, complete with their own waterboard and diploma. Now, Ware fabricated doll-sized um, houses uh, to showcase these insects and she's even had some of them queuing up for a vaccine shot about... <gasps> not to take liberties with the news we'll have much more of course in the coming hour for you from that lockdown in australia's victoria state in response to the growing cluster in melbourne also the sentencing in hong kong today of the activist jimmy lai for having marched in another unauthorized assembly Look forward to brighter skies. The weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways.